Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the latest SMSL SU9 Pro. And this Pro version is quite a bit different and updated compared to its predecessor and brings a lot of new stuff on the table. So stay with me today and we'll go through this. And to start off with things that did not change, we are talking about looks, build, and connectivity and also features. Everything that you remember from the SU9 version is still here, the, the good and the bad. I don't think there's anything bad actually, because at this level we have three different inputs, that's optical, coaxial and USB, Bluetooth is on board too, and two sets of analog outputs. RCAs are single-ended and XLRs, which are balanced. Then in the front, there is a volume knob slash button and a colored LCD display with standard SMSL UI, which is quite rich when it comes to features. You can set uh, things like DPLL. I su uh, suggest you keep that one at minimum for the best sound fidelity. You have color tones and different digital filters. There's nothing new there, so I'm just gonna skip over it instead of taking too much time talking about that. What is new is first a DAC chip that this whole DA converter is based around, and that's latest and greatest Sabre chip. I think that one is latest and greatest, I, I believe it is. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And also it's joined by the latest and greatest XMOS signal processor. And this one, among other things, supports really high PCM resolutions and really high DSD resolutions. It also supports, uh, supports MQA if you care about that. The thing that's probably worth mentioning is that MQA is also supported through coaxial and optical inputs. So while it's very common, and it was very common, for USB only to have MQA support, now you can utilize that uh, particular compression format on any of these inputs. And I've tried it using tidal streaming, I've tried it through coaxial input, and the deck showed small MQA logo accepting and unfolding MQA format, so that works. And the last thing that I wanted to mention when it comes to features of this DAC is that this time it uses 11 uh, op amps in the output analog section instead of three that the original SU9 used. And what all of these changes mean for the sound quality actually. And when I hooked SU9 Pro into my system, what I've noticed first that uh, nothing actually bothered me coming down from like a DAC that's three times the price. Uh, when I say nothing bothered me, I mean that sound did not sound thin, shrill, a flat, two-dimensional or anything like that. And that's a first good sign. Tonality is even and the bass line is full and weighty and punchy and it's simply following that recent SMSL philosophy that the, the sound is slightly warmer and fuller in its tonality. And uh, listening to it, I quite liked it. It's, uh, the sound stage is decently wide and deep. I can definitely notice a decent three-dimensionality of, of, of imaging and of every tone inside of the soundstage. And I especially like that in a DAC. And uh, a DAC at this price point should be able to convey that depth and that three-dimensionality and palpability of tones. Like a few years ago, that wasn't the case. For example, the original SU9 was warmer in the bass line, but it did sound much more congested and thin in the mid-range and upper frequencies. This one is a completely different beast in my opinion, much fuller and much more natural sounding. Then the next thing I noticed in the sound of this DAC that uh, highs are present, they're uh, sufficiently bright and well extended but again, never sharp and never like overcooked, overdone. And once again, it was just something that was well judged. It, it, it sounds 
present and extended, but mature, smooth, just rounded in a good way. It has pretty good dynamics. It sounds lively. It has baseline punch. It has that sort of nice punch and kick throughout the whole frequency spectrum. It sounds lively, but never sharp, never dry or too analytical. And I was thinking, yeah, this is one really good sounding DAC when I'm listening to it on its own. I cannot find any true fault or shortcoming with its sound. So to really assess its worth, I've put it against some of my favorite DACs at this price point. And that had to start with SMSL M500 MK2. Now, this one, if you follow my channel regularly or at all, you probably know that for some eight or nine months, something like that, this has been my favorite up to 500 US dollars DAC. And when I've compared these two directly, I've noticed that M500 MK2 sounds generally softer. It's, it's a little bit softer around the edges. And uh, high frequencies are not as clear and crisp. Their extension is okay. It's not a dark sounding DAC, in my opinion. It has well extended highs, but again, they're somewhat softer and the line between different notes and the, the background is not as clear as with SU9 Pro here. So switching back and forth, and for example, listening to this song, I simply noticed that uh, SU9 Pro has all of the good qualities that I liked about M500 MK2, meaning that it has, it has full bodied, lush sound. It has full mid-range, full vocals, and instruments have body, they, they, they have palpability, but it outlines them a little bit cleaner. Overall, it just sounds a little bit cleaner. And I think that's especially true with high frequencies that simply sound... I'm not sure if the brighter is appropriate word, but they just sound a little bit more prominent and sparkly without being analytical or too forward or annoying in any way. It's just that there is a little bit more sparkle and gloss in the highest frequencies. And they also sound a little bit cleaner, a little bit better separated than with M500 MK2. So it was quite an easy decision, in my opinion. SU9 Pro does sound a little bit better, more detailed, but not, uh, that's not coming at the cost of full bodiness and warmth and just juiciness that I so liked about M500 MK2. It's just like having the same formula, but, but slightly lifting it to another level of performance. And that difference is not huge by any means. If you are a user of M500 MK2, rest assured you have a great deck. Should you upgrade to this one? I don't know, I cannot tell you that. You don't need to. I suppose that M500 MK2 can now be uh, bought and fa found online for cheaper price than SU9 Pro here. It was cheaper to, to start with, uh, 440, but I've heard that nowadays you can find it for three something US dollars, whereas this one is 499. But if you're on the market right now and your budget is okay with that, I would go with SU9 Pro. I find it to, to simply sound a little bit better. If you want to upgrade, I'm not sure what to recommend. The difference is there, but it's not really huge. You do not have to go to a FOMO mode immediately. You, you will miss nothing if you wait out for a next iteration of, of a DAC in this price level and then change then. Or don't change at all, M500 MK2 is a great DAC on its own. Next, I guess that some of you will ask me, but what about SMSL D0200 MK2? And if you remember my review on that one, I've told you that I think D0200 MK2 and M500 MK2 are on equal footing. They're equally good sounding DACs, 
but the O200 MK2 is darker, it's tamer up top and slightly more laid back in the mid-range. The difference is more in terms of tonality than it is of the level of fidelity and level of overall quality. But I personally preferred M500 MK2. It sounded slightly more open, more forward, a little bit more engaging, if you will. And saying that now I prefer S9 Pro to M500 MK2 by proxy, I also prefer it to DO200 MK2. But I wanted to move to more expensive DAX and find out where is the limit of SU9 Pro and how good it actually is. So I pulled out topping D90LE, which uh, sounds really, really good and it's a little bit pricier. And I've compared them directly to notice that D90LE has slightly grippier sound. And that starts from the baseline. Baseline is more controlled, it's a little bit tighter, it's grippier, and it has more texture, tone texture. And the same goes for the mid-range, where tone texture, and especially in vocals, for example, is more pronounced. But that comes at the cost that everything sounds a little bit drier, a little bit rougher. And when you go back to SU9 Pro, you notice that it just sounds more liquidy smooth and more glossy. So the, the, the overall sound of everything that you hear through D90 LE is a little bit like a mate finish. It has a little bit of grain and the rough texture, whereas through SU9 Pro, everything is just liquidy smooth, like its tones are gliding over a really well smoothed ice surface. Whereas with D9 TLE, those tones are running over a slightly rougher texture, like a slightly rougher ice. Which one sounds better? Yeah, that's a tough, tough call. Sound staging basically equally good. Maybe D9 TLE sounds slightly deeper, but uh, SU9 Pro is slightly more forward, but also a little bit more three-dimensional and palpable-like. That's SMSL's things, thing, where D9 TLE thing is each tone itself does not feel that full and palpable, but that micro texture of a tone is conveyed a little bit better. And which one is more true to the source, I really cannot tell that. But I can tell you that personally, I do lean towards SMSL's sound uh, more than towards Topping's sound. But that's just my personal preference, because uh, I think that for all intents and purposes, looking at both of these objectively, they sound equally good with slightly different qualities. Like overall liveliness, punchiness, dynamic, sound staging, it's so comparable, just that presentation is slightly different and I've explained the differences, so I hope you can choose for yourself. Uh, SU9 Pro is cheaper, that's a plus for it. D9 TLE has more uh, connectivity on the back with i squared s and AES EBU if you maybe need that. That's a plus for D9 TLE. Uh, you'll have to decide for yourself. But matching D9 TLE while costing less than it is a pretty good place to be in for a DAC such as SU9 Pro. And to test the limits of the SU9 Pro, I've compared it directly to the SMSL's own, but pricier, SU10. And if you have seen that review, you already know that SU10 is to my ears and in my opinion, the best sounding DAC up to 1000 US dollars that I've heard so far. It's just so well balanced, detailed and rich sounding. And when I've compared these two directly, yeah, I, I can notice that SU10 sounds wider. The sound stage is a little bit wider, deeper, just more spacious overall, and has slightly more air around the instruments, like more empty space. Everything is just a little bit separated and pulled apart a little bit more. 
Also, the tone texture is slightly more noticeable, similar to Topping D90 LE that I've just uh, explained in, in the previous comparison. But at the same time, SU10 keeps somehow that smoothness and natural effortness that I've praised SU9 Pro for. So it combines the best of that SMSL's tonality while revealing micro details and micro texture as good, if not better, than D90LE. And, and packing that in a slightly bigger area soundstage. So overall speaking, SU10 does sound richer and lusher. When you go back to SU9 Pro, you notice that soundstage slightly congests and tones lose a little bit of that richness and texture but, you know, the difference is not huge. You can notice it, it's there, but it's not huge. So if you have, uh, if you don't have more than 500 US dollars, you can have this one and you can rest assured that you have a mighty fine sounding deck. But if this price difference is not a problem for your budget, and if your hi-fi system, the rest of your system, is good enough to show this kind of difference, then yeah, the SU10 is a better sounding source. There's no sense beating around the bushes here. But that really doesn't say anything bad about SU9 Pro. Because SU9 Pro here is truly an advancement and an upgrade compared to its direct predecessor, SU9. It's a much fuller, lusher, better sounding deck in my opinion. And basically as it stands, except for SU10, I cannot think of any deck below 1000 US dollars that beats it right out. Some do some things better, like D90 LE here. Maybe Denafrip Series 2 will sound wider, bigger, lusher, but it is also more dynamically compressed and it's not as detailed and as clean sounding as SU9 Pro. It's a pretty darn good deck, overall speaking, and it offers quite a lot for its price. Yeah, this one is simply an easy recommendation. And even more, it's finally something that will retire my good old trusted M500 MK2. It's still good, but this one is better. And until something better comes along, it will be my new reference around this price point. And I don't know how long it will stay there because new DAX will come and challenge it. Uh, topping E70 is next in line to be tested, coming really soon. But for now, SU9 Pro is a mighty good DAC and an easy recommendation. That would be all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, click that button, comment down below, give me your thoughts and opinions, and see you next time. Bye.